Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon and today I want to show you a really cool tool that I just discovered called Eskinema. Now, Eskinema is a way that you can record your Linux terminal sessions. Now, it makes troubleshooting a lot easier than just looking at a big wall of text that somebody just copied and pasted and sent to you, but it doesn't involve as much overhead as doing an actual screen recording with some software like OBS or something like that. Now, it also gives you a way to share these screen recording sessions via their website. And it overall, it's just really easy to use and extremely helpful. I can really see this revolutionizing the way that I show people, you know, the input and output of my terminal session when I'm doing some troubleshooting or things like that, right? We've all run into some issues where, you know, maybe you're trying to compile a program and it's not working. So you're sending like, you know, snippets of code or whatever the output of your terminal is to a friend and trying to get them to help you troubleshoot. But Eskinema is going to give us a way to do this a lot more easily. So here's the website that I have up on screen. And if you take a look, if we hit this play button here, this is what the end product is actually going to look like. It's like a little terminal that we can see typed out in real time with the input and output. And we can just copy and paste right from here. So which is, you know, a lot better than if you were to just send a screen recording. That way, you know, you can actually do the copy and paste and things out of this. So let's take a look at uh, Eskinema. I actually have it running up on a Kali instance that I have. So let's pop this over here. We'll log in. Now, this is in the apt repository, so we can just install it with apt. So if we just did a sudo apt install Eskinema, we could install it here. Now, of course, I already have this installed, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, let's just make a new directory. We'll just call it ASCII. Uh, there we go. We'll call it Eskinema. Perfect. So let's go into Eskinema and let's take a look at how this actually works. To get started with Eskinema, let's just type in Eskinema and we'll see what their help page looks like. So you can see there's different commands and things that we can run within Eskinema. The, you know, the basic essence of this is that we are going to record a terminal session and then we can either choose to upload that to their platform and share a link that others can access that recording from on a web application or we can just save the recording as a local file and transfer that file or play it back locally without it ever touching their servers. So de depending on what you want to do, there's different use cases for that. So the basic syntax, we'll just do a schema and then space REC for record. And then we're going to specify a file name just to save this locally. Now doing it this way, whatever we record in a schema will not be uploaded to the servers and it's just going to be stored on our local machine. So we'll just call this uh, test. So now, just like if you're using the command script, right, if you're familiar with that, we can just start doing whatever we want in this terminal. So we can do like an echo hello, uh, you know, we can do something like SL, which is like, a, you know, the train that goes across your screen or something like that, right? So you can really do whatever you want. And Eskinema is going to be recording this terminal input and output, and then we're going to be able to play that back to us. So now all we have to do is type in exit. Now you can see that it says the Eskinema recording is finished and it's saved to test. So if we do an LS here, we can see we have this test file. So now if we just do an Eskinema, um, let's see, Eskinema and then play, and we'll do test, it's going to actually play this back for us. Now you can see there's gonna be a little bit of a delay, just like it was when I started recording. Then we should see the echo that I typed in. You can see, and it's typing just as slow as I normally do. And then we can see, you know, it ran the SL command just like we just did. And, uh, you know, we can see the input and output for there. I'm just going to hit control C to stop that. So I don't have to finish, but you know, you can see how this could be extremely useful if you're having issues, maybe on a public GitHub repository, right? And you're trying to show the issue that you're having. You could actually start your screen recording session. And then what you could do is, you know, record the issue that you're having and then share it with somebody else so they can see exactly what was happening. It's a lot easier than, than sharing a screenshot or just a wall of text that somebody has to look through. Now, the other thing that we can do is actually record the Eskinema session and send it off to the servers and just share the URL, right? So this is really useful if you just want to share a link with a friend and have them see the issue that you're having. Now to do this, we'll just do a schema and then record, and I'm not going to specify a file name here, right? So I'm going to hit record and now we can just do whatever, right? We'll do an echo. Hello. Okay. We'll type in exit. Now it's going to say I can press enter to upload this to eskinema.org. Now I've already logged into my Eskinema account. I'll show you how to do that after, but you will want to log in before doing this. So we can just go ahead and press enter. And now we can see the URL in which this is saved at. 
So I can go ahead and open this link. It's going to bring up a schema. And look, you can see exactly what was happening. You can hit play. And we should be seeing me type in echo hello. And there that is there. So, you know, then I could go through and copy and paste stuff from here. It's it's very interactive just like that because it is just a terminal session. And you can see it's linked to my Conda account here. Now, uh, if you do go to create an Eskinema account, all you would do is go to their website and register there. Of course, that's pretty self-explanatory for registering for their account. And then they have an, an auth command that you would run. So you would just run Eskinema and then auth. I'm not going to run it here, but it's just going to give you a URL that you can click on. And that's just going to associate this installation of Eskinema on this machine with your account. So then I can go ahead and upload things to my account. And you can either make recordings public or private. So, you know, for instance, the recording that I just made is private, uh, but you could make them public as well. So there's a lot of different things you could do with that to kind of monitor your access control with it. Now, if you are privacy oriented and you don't want to share any of this information with the Eskinema servers, but you do want to continue having the functionality of Eskinema, you can also self-host this application, which I think is just a great touch. I love when applications allow you to do that. So if we take a look at their installation guide, uh, we can we can see uh, they do have a way to install the Eskinema server and host it yourself. And it's all based on a Docker container, which I absolutely love. It's really going, going to minimize the time it takes you to deploy this on your own instance and make it a lot easier to manage. So, you know, if you go to their uh, repository, you can see the steps to do that yourself and follow along if you would like to self-host it. Now, another thing I want to point out is they do have some pretty good documentation about how to do different things with the software. And let's see, one cool thing is the configuration file. So it has its own config file. You can see where it's typically hosted at, and you can set all sorts of awesome things here. One thing I really like is the idle time limit. So that way it doesn't just show you idling at the terminal for a minute, right? You can change this to, you know, maybe just one second or two seconds. Uh, so whoever's watching it doesn't have to just see a, an idle terminal. Or you can uh, change the playback speed as well, which is super useful if you want to see something sped up and you don't want to spend the entire amount of time watching the recording. So I think Eskinema is really cool and useful for this kind of troubleshooting stuff. One thing I also want to show you is that it's actually just doing a terminal playback, right? So it's not actually running these commands again. So if I do an LS here, we can see we just have this test file. Let's just remove that test file. Let's do another Eskinema record, and then uh, we'll call this test. Now in here, we're just gonna touch a file, we'll call it foo, right? And now if we do an LS, we see that foo is there. And I'm gonna go ahead and type exit to end the recording. So now we can see we have foo and test, so foo is that, is that file that we just touched and test is our recording. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and delete foo. So now we can see that only test is there. So that file that we touched is no longer on our machine. Now if I go ahead and do an Eskinema uh, play, we'll do Eskinema play test to play that recording back. So now we'll see the actions that I just went through, which was uh, touching foo and doing an LS. And we could see we had foo and test there and the exit, right? But if we do an LS now, we can see that only test is there. So, you know, it looked like it was running this touch foo command again, but it wasn't. It was just an actual uh, terminal playback. So, you know, and you could play this file back as many times as you want, share it with a friend and things like that. But that's really all there is to Eskinema. It's a really powerful tool. It's very simple to use, but I think this could really change the way that you troubleshoot problems and share those errors that you're having with other people. If you found this video useful, please remember to drop a like and subscribe down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.